It is Computer Science Education Week, which means the Hour of Code is in full swing. In honor of the global movement to teach kids and adults to code, we welcome Maria Nagaga, Program Manager at Microsoft on the Visual Studio and .NET teams. Welcome, Maria. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for coming on. So Maria has been an active participant in the Hour of Code activities for several years. Currently, she's responsible for bringing new developers onto the .NET Core platform. Uh, Microsoft released the .NET Core 1.0 this past summer. Let's start by giving us a brief overview of what that is. Okay, so... In about two years ago, we open source.net and I am responsible for bringing net new development .NET Core. So what .NET Core means is that now you can use .NET on a on Mac, on Linux, on Windows. So be happy where you are and now you can use .NET everywhere, which is a huge thing for us. And we've seen some really good uptick. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we've seen this year is how fast ASP.NET is, where we are up to uh, one point some six million requests per second. So uh, we've been doing some good work and a lot of that has come from the community. So we're pretty excited about that at Microsoft. So in the past, when you were working on Hour of Code projects, uh, what kind of things, uh, what kind of programs did you work on? So I worked on a couple. So before becoming a PM, I was a technical evangelist and that gave me the opportunity to uh, test new things. And one of the things I got really passionate about was teaching kids how to code. So some of the things I use is gaming. It's really, really popular with students because you grab their attention immediately. So I moved uh, from Scratch to Game Maker, which is one of my favorites because it's a lot of drag and drop and also writing little lines of code, which gets them excited about it. And Young Game Makers, which was such a huge thing that a friend of mine, Stacey Mulcahy, started um, a little bit over a year ago. What we, what she started doing was inviting um, industry people to come and teach kids how to code. And all the money we would raise, we'd actually give it to after school programs that will teach people how to code in addition to that. So I used to participate in the ones in New York, but uh, she did some in Vancouver. Vancouver, in London, I believe, um, all across the United States. So it was a really good effort. Um, and I can't wait for that to start up again. So hopefully we'll be having more of those. I love what you guys are doing here. It's super cool. I, I feel like as a parent, we're used to, and you know, I, I've, you feel this pressure a little bit as a parent where it's like, got to get my, ch my children active in some way. You know, got to put them into sports so that they can play these sports and figure out the thing that they're really good at or that they really enjoy and they can really excel at that. Um, taking that into the realm of coding, like when, when and how do you get children kind of engaged and involved in this sort of way? Well, I, I mean, I have to imagine there's kind of an age at which this is more effective than, than others because you have to be a certain age to understand how to code to a certain uh, degree. But what would you say there? So we, I have actually taught kids as young as five and I always experiment on my nephew, which my sister is happy to do because she'll just dump him over at my house and say, bye. See you later. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like anywhere between uh, five, I would start them off with something like scratch and just know that you'll have 15 minute time windows in which you have their attention, but enjoy those 15 minutes. But eight was a really great age as well because they've kind of understand how apps are, um, they've used, they have their, their games that they like, like Angry Birds is a big one. And then those Flappy Birds. Um, for my nep nephew personally, it's Dots. He loves the Dots game. And now he's at a level 141. So I had to cut him off and say, you can't play that game anymore until you can build a full game now. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's all about how you approach it. Also, um, figure out the best way to teach the kids is also very important. One of the things I learned was don't use PowerPoints with kids, just go straight into code. Because if you try to give them like a PowerPoint and like, this is what code is, and this is when it was discovered. And these are all the people who are influential. <laughs> like it's like, it's nap time. Yeah, so yeah. I found that just by opening up whatever tool they're going to use and just showing them is really, really, really huge. Um, I've had I've taught kids as young as 10 um, how to build games in JavaScript with Phaser, with Black Girls Code. So it, it really is just make sure you have them in the tool as soon as possible. Also make sure you're introducing them to tools that are easily accessible. Um, that's another big thing is that um, I try to pick tools that I know that they can either get at school or um, they can get at home. 
that I used to use a lot was Scratch Online. And then I had one student who told me, I don't have internet at home. So making sure that you're able to create an environment where every student can go away feeling happy and being able to continue this work afterwards. And so what would you recommend for teaching adults, someone who's looking for a career change or looking to brush up their skills? Where should someone start if they're starting at the beginning of learning to code? Oh, which is, which is really cool because a thing I do at Microsoft now is in addition to being a PM, I'm also responsible for bringing net new developers onto the platform. So that has also been a huge eye opener for me of wh where do you start people like who are trying to change careers? So I'm involved with boot camps across the country. So I think that the web is a really great place to start. And the reason why I think the web is good is that you're exposed to everything. Um, you have to learn how backends work. You see your results immediately. And you also get exposure to all these different frameworks because anything works on the web. Like you can go from .NET to Ruby to Python. And then also thinking about what does a job market have to offer? Um, I have a couple of people who I know have gone through boot camps and they've graduated in particular stacks that are oversaturated now. So if you're really into learning how to code and you're doing it for a job, kind of do your research on what um, jobs are available uh, in your area and kind of figure out how you can find a boot camp near you that offers you that opportunity to learn that stack. Now, how did you get your start in computer science? Oh, I started late. Like whenever I talk to people about my story, they're like, oh, I started programming when I was eight. No, that wasn't me. I started programming when I was 22 and I discovered the uh, programming by accident. So I was in an internet cafe, which doesn't exist anymore. Like I don't think people, like internet cafes don't exist anymore. Every cafe is an internet cafe now. They just all have internet. <laughs> they all have internet, but you used to go and you used to pay for 30 minutes yeah. and use it efficiently. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was obsessed with Destiny's Child. I'm, I'm now obsessed with Beyonce, but at that time it was Destiny's Child. <laughs> so I accidentally right clicked on uh, the the site, the Destiny Child site. And I was like, what is all this stuff? And it was, it was HTML, it was all this markup, it was all this stuff. So I had a flash drive that had 25 megabytes, which was a lot in those days. <laughs> and I saved it. And I took it home onto my computer that didn't have the internet and it showed up as an internet explorer sign. And I was like, what is this? Opened it up and it looked like the website, but it wasn't. So I started playing around with the markup and realized how to put things together. And then the first language I truly, truly learned because HTML just stumbled into it, it was SQL. Um, my first language ever was SQL because you could query against information and get results back and you could do all this cool math stuff. And this was all in access. So I wasn't a fancy programmer until I went to university to, to do computer science. So your advice is to fancy. kids, right click. <laughs> <laughs> right click. Don't be afraid to break stuff. So a lot of people, right. um, one of the things I've learned with my nephew is that he'll be like, oh, don't do that. You'll break it. You'll break it. And I'm like, it's okay. Break it. Destroy it. Like you'll you always have to write code knowing that you'll have to throw it away. And that's okay. Like that's how we learn. So don't be afraid to break stuff. Don't be afraid to learn new things. Don't look at particular languages and think they're too hard for you. So I hear a lot of things like, C sharp is too hard and Java is too hard and Python's no, these are all within your reach. Go give them a try. There's nothing that's hard. Uh, as long as you put in the work, you're, you're going to do, ju you do just fine. Well, Maria, thank you so much for joining us. Maria Nagaga is a PM at Microsoft. Where's the best place uh, for people to follow you online? Um, I am at Lady Nagaga. Ha, I like it. <laughs> exactly, right? You'll never forget my name with that. So I'm Lady Nagaga. Please tweet me if you want any information about how do I get started with young kids or um, any of the work that I'm doing with reaching net new developers. If you have a boot count, boot camp out there and you want to introduce .NET or C Sharp and you need support, um, you actually get support from someone who builds a product every single day. Uh, so let me know and I'm happy to help. Well, Maria, thank you so much for thank joining you, us. Thank you, Maria. You are awesome. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for having me. Have a good day. Bye. All right, take care. Have take a good care. night.